genuinely getting stress sweats. I'm about to attempt to make swimwear for the first time. But it is my goal this year to try and push myself out of my comfort zone and try make new things that I can then share with you guys on here. So my goal for this is to tackle it in two ways. The first one being using a pattern to bring it to life. And the second one is using a pair of existing swimwear that I have to replicate and try and make. So if you want to join along in making your own pair of bikinis as well, this is what you'll need. If you find a pattern online, you can do what I did and purchase it off them and then you print it out, jigsaw it together and then sticky tape it. Otherwise, grab a pair of bikinis that you already own and that you know that you like the fit and that can be your reference for the self-drafting process. You'll then also need some material. The good thing about when you buy a pattern, they'll probably suggest the amount of fabric you need per size. Otherwise, if you're doing the self-drafting process, just measure your bikini, remembering to do the back and the front side and order enough fabric for that to then fit onto. I got this beautiful material from Spoonflower. This is not sponsored at all. I genuinely just love their process where you can go onto their website, you pick out the design or the pattern that you want to go onto the fabric first. And then when you check out, you select the sports lycra, which is what I did. And that is obviously ideal for active wear and for bikinis. They sustainably print it using eco-friendly dyes. Another reason why I'm mildly terrified of making this is lycra is not the cheapest. So I really want to get it right because I don't want to accidentally chop it the wrong way or not make it fit right. And then I've just wasted however much this cost. In case you like these particular patterns, this sunflower one is by Indie Bloom Design. And then this peachy floral one is by More Candy Shop. When I was doing my research for the material, it was suggested to go after a four-way stretch material. I guess that just helps with the fit of it. We'll see. For one of the bikinis that I'll be making, I'm just gonna make it completely double-sided with this material. But if you are like this pattern style one that I'll be making first, you'll need some lining. Again, I think it just needs to be that four-way stretch. So once you've got your pattern or your reference bikinis and your material, you'll then also need some elastic. Again, everywhere that I read in my researches, they suggest about five or six mil, which I guess is like a quarter of an inch wide woven elastic. When I was purchasing this, it literally said swimwear elastic. And again, if you buy a pattern, they'll probably suggest how much you need to go with it. Otherwise, just measure your leg holes and your waist area or any arm holes for this and maybe even just order a bit more just in case. You'll then also need some fabric scissors, some fabric chalk, some pins, some stretch needles that we then replace on our machine as that will help us when we're sewing the lycra and measuring tape, some matching thread to our material. I'm adding these little hardware pieces in that will be a feature piece on the sides of the bottoms and the center of the top. That was all purchased through the Swim Style Ladies. And then you'll also need your trusty old sewing machine, as well as maybe some water and calm music to help you get through this without having a mental breakdown. I'm so excited and scared at the same time. <laughs> For this first section, I'm going to follow the pattern that I bought, which means that I need to jump on the computer, grab the downloaded file, print it out and make sure that I set it to 100% scale. If you do purchase a pattern online and you need to print it at home, they normally provide a scale on there so you can print out a sample, measure it and make sure that that is to the sizing that is intended. I just had to figure out the style that I wanted to make and cut out the pieces for that. And unlike a normal pattern that you'll get, which is one big sheet, this has been broken up into individual pages that you then create the various parts of the pattern to then add together. Again, the pattern provided should show how the pieces go together so I kept referencing that and then once I got all those pieces together it was time to lay out my fabric put the patterns on top cut out the pieces and then follow their provided steps of how to assemble it. I won't go into too much detail about making the one with the pattern as I'll link below everything in case you like these styles and you want to purchase it as well and when you buy the PDFs you get all the steps handed over with that and once I get my head around just the basics of this then I'm going to jump into self-drafting.
particularly with lycra. If you go for it, you know, those big cheap rolls, I did actually have to use that at one stage. It was terrible. It just wouldn't catch on the lycra and I would highly recommend getting a higher quality thread and that way it will sew better because when I did use a better thread, it sewed better and therefore it looks better. So one thing in the pattern was that they just did normal hems around most of the edges, but instead I've done like a hidden seam. So pretty much like you do with interfacing, you sew it with the good sides facing and then you just kind of flip it all out and then you don't have to hem it and it just has this nice clean edge and I think in bikinis I just personally like that style as well from previous ones I bought I know that they don't dig into me and they just fit nicely so I'm happy I went ahead with that and now that I have kind of got my head around the basics of how to make a bikini I'm going to try and replicate some pieces that I have and this time I will take you through more of a guided step of what I do I'm pretty much guessing this as I go based on just like prior sewing experience and what I kind of just picked up from making those first pairs of bikinis so I am learning along the way and I'm going to try to explain this in as best way that makes sense for you and also in a way that you can then adapt to whatever bikinis you end up making. I'm hoping this won't take too long but we'll see. So I am now coming to you from the future and I can prove that it did turn out cute. I'm wearing it now and the benefit of having one piece is you can pair it with some denim pants like this and it becomes like a cute little outfit but it was a bit of a journey getting here and the reason why I'm now refilming this little like talk over piece is because I was so naive making this and I thought it was going to be super straightforward and I was all excited. It makes sense. It's starting to make sense. And then I went ahead with a few steps that weren't correct and I ended up having to sit there and unpick for a while so I've watched it all back and honestly I even if I tried to pick out the pieces that did make sense and did end up working it just it just is a bit of a kerfuffle so here we are today i'm gonna talk you through what did work and warn you of what not to do based on what i did maybe grab a scrap piece first and practice and make sure that the thread's working play around with the tension until you've got it to a setting that works for me i just pretty much left mine on like mid-range tension good thread zigzag stitch and it happened to work for me so all of our machines are different the material we're using is probably different so have a bit of a play around with it before you jump into it and that might help you then get your settings right and then you can go ahead my intention with this self-drafting process is that I'm replicating some bikinis that I already have because I know that I like the fit of them. Some of them have stretched out so they no longer fit me as well and also the brands, some of them no longer exist or they don't produce the styles that I'm replicating. So I think it comes down to morals when we are recreating pieces that we already have. It's fine for us to replicate a piece that we love and that we will wear ourselves but if we are going to take another brand's design and replicate it to then sell on, that's crossing the line. Just my two cents. For the one piece, it is a off the shoulder shoulder style that has a tie strap and this original piece that I owned is only a single sided with some lining which now that I have gone through the process I have learned that that probably was an easier process to do but I really wanted to make all these new pieces double sided so that I'm pretty much getting two pieces out of it. So I grabbed my first bit of fabric that I wanted to focus on and laid down the front side of my piece that I will be replicating. When it comes to the stretch of the fabric and positioning your garment on top of it, I found that with the four way stretch there was one that was a little bit stretchier so I assumed that the stretchier should go with the width because we obviously want it to stretch out and fit our body parts. Again, I might be totally wrong but it seemed to work. For my one piece, this is one that is kind of stretched out to its original fit so if I know that it's already kind of stretched out I'm only going to add about a quarter of an inch seam allowance because I don't want to make it too big again if that makes sense. If you find that your garment that you're basing it off is already a good fit maybe just add half an inch seam allowance and that should be a healthy amount to allow for us to add seams and any hems and elastic where need be. The benefit of recreating something is if there is something that bugs you about it you can change it so I know that the crotch area of this is really thin and can be a bit risque sometimes so I'm going to make the crotch of this a little bit wider and then did the same process where I laid the backside and again just shuffled my garment around so that it was just focusing on this backside and added a quarter of an inch around all the edges. That's essentially one bikini cut out. I've got the front and the back and we're just going to repeat that process for the second material which will be the inner section and technically the reversible side. So now that I have my four pieces cut out, it's two for one side, two for the other side. I'm then just going to focus on the matching material and join them. So I lay them good sides facing and all I did for this if I had have just done it the right way the first time is sewed down the two side seams and left everything else untouched. The bit that did go wrong here is I actually ended up sewing the crotch as well. In my mind it made sense to do that but then when it came to flipping it all out it was an absolute mess. Like it, 
Obviously in this video you'll probably see that my crotch is joined so just ignore that because I end up going and cutting that open later. Okay so what I've done is I have turned one of these bikinis good sides out. I've kept this one inside out and I'm now just going to insert this into there so that the good sides of these panels are now all facing. You make sure you've got the front and the back sides all lined up. We're just going to focus on the leg holes. So obviously they're not attached to the crotch section so they're just kind of two open leg holes. In a few key places in like the side seams, crotch seams and then I'll probably do one halfway between each of these. It just helps you indicate where they should be matching. We're going to sew one line joining them and then we're also going to add the elastic in after that. What I picked up from going through the pattern process is that you add it to any section where you don't want it to be loose and baggy such as the leg holes and like arm holes and obviously if it's a two piece around the waist area as well. You end up hiding it in that extra seam allowance section that we have just created by sewing that seam together. To figure out how long we need the elastic to be, measure this section of the leg hole and then you want it to just be a little bit shorter than that section so that it keeps it fitter. You don't want it to be so much shorter that it looks bunched up. If you take about one to two inches from that length of the section, that's how much you then cut the elastic to be. And then we have to then pin it in place in this seam allowance area. So we start at one end, pin it there, and then just kind of stretch it out to meet each section and make sure that it fits in that whole area. And you'll find that it has that little bit of stretch, but as you start to sew it, it doesn't bunch it up. So once you have determined that length of the area, taken away one or two inches, trimmed your bit of elastic, you can then pin it in place and then just remain it on that zigzag stitch. And in that hidden seam allowance area, we're then just going to sew it in place it's time to start closing up the final section so we'll flip it so that the good sides are all revealed now we can focus on joining the crotch section up I pretty much inserted one tunnel into the other and then folded the edge of the other one inside so that it creates like an inner hem but then they're just overlapping and all you have to do is just sew one line across there and that will end up joining it it might not look the best and there's probably other best practices out there so feel free to do your own research and find that out that to me just ended up making sense and Honestly, if anyone's looking down in that area, good on them. <laughs> and then it's time to start closing up the top section. I could probably, same thing as what I just did with the crotch, fold both sides inwards and sew it like that. But I just ended up sewing it about a quarter of an inch off the edge. I then did the same process where I figured out an area where I wanted the elastic to be, which for me just ended up being kind of where this curve section starts to all the way under my arm and again to the back curve section of where this sleeve starts on the back and then minus two inches from that I decided which side this material will be folded over for the hem and sewed the elastic on that side that will then get hidden once I pinned that I then sewed it in place and then just flipped that hem over and sewed that in place that means now when I wear this double sided one side will have like a feature hem which means this pattern will kind of show on the other side that's totally fine by me again I was just doing a bit of a trial and error process probably more error than anything to be honest it has all its imperfections it's wearable I love it that is just the beauty of sewing a lot of the time you just kind of have to accept that things are not going to turn out perfect especially if you are doing it for the first time to continue this video. The next part is I'm going to be replicating a two-piece set and make a high-waisted pair of double-sided bikinis and all like those little awkward off-cut pieces that I have I'm going to try to turn them into little triangles because obviously they're small you don't need much for it and if I end up having enough me and all my friends can be wearing matching bikinis. <sighs> I hope that made sense it probably doesn't I'm gonna explain this one probably in a bit more detail and hopefully I don't stuff it up as much. <laughs> These high-waisted pair of bikinis, which I literally wear like every time I go surfing, whenever I just feel like a comfortable piece to wear. They're created by Abby Rose. She no longer makes bikinis anymore, so I literally can't order these anymore, so I really want to recreate them. The plan is I just want to make waist area where the legs come up to a little bit higher just because I want that higher cut. Obviously make it double-sided as well. So that is the goal. And then I've just got this triangle bikini top. I've tried to think of a way to make this double-sided, but honestly, I just can't get my head around it. So I'm just going to do what they've done and add some lining in there. See, in my mind, that seems super simple. So let's see how we go. We'll do the bottoms first. Ah, my neighbors just decided to start doing some renovations. So I'm going to do the voiceover later. 
what I did is I laid down the fabric and then laid the garment on top focusing on one side first so these bikinis kind of fit me how I already want them to so when I traced around one side I just made sure to add only about half an inch seam allowance as that will be plenty enough to hide in the seams and add the elastic into again it depends on the original piece that you're recreating as to how much seam allowance you want to add if it is a piece that you find is too tight for you I would recommend adding about an inch seam allowance that will give it looser fit as well as obviously the seam allowance that you need there for the sewing if you find that the original piece is actually quite oversized then I would recommend even just tracing exactly the size that it is because by the time you then take the seam allowance in it should fit a little bit tighter obviously it depends how big it is for you traced around it with my seam allowance did that for the front and the back on one of the pattern piece materials and then I repeated the process for the other pattern it was then time to pair up the matching materials face them good sides and sew down these two side seams leaving everywhere else open as I have learned to do once I've completed both of those I then flip one of them so the good sides are facing out and the other one is facing good sides inward place the good sides that are facing out on the inside of the other ones so they're now facing each other and then we're then going to focus on sewing the legs of those together and adding the elastic in so I pinned it in place made sure that the seams around the waist area were matching and then pinned in those other key areas sew it in place making sure to be about a quarter of an inch from that edge and then it is time to add the elastic in so measure this area that we'll be adding it onto and take away about one to two inches and that will be the length that we need to cut the elastic. Once you've figured that out, just again, place the elastic so it's sitting on top of that seam allowance section. Pin it in the key places and simply just went around that edge, stretched it out as I went and sewed it in place on both of the leg holes. This is the point that I then flipped it so now the good sides are revealed and we should have the top waist section unsewn and the crotch section unsewn. I'm going to cut to the bit where I started to finally figure out how to make this double-sided. It was doing my head in, I could not figure it out and I kind of wish I knew because this is how I would have done the one piece but alas I can always go back and redo it later. Maybe I should have just titled this watch me fail at sewing. Still don't know. Oh my god! I just did something that worked. I did my crotch area differently. The one piece one was very much so a hack job. I just like inserted one side, kind of overlapped the other side and folded that bit in. You know that one? I remember watching a scrunchie tutorial. They showed a technique which I hadn't really seen before where even though it's like an awkward amount of fabric that you can't entirely sew the good sides facing, you just try and bunch it up where they do face bit by bit. And then you're obviously just going to be left with this little hole at the end that you're just going to have to fold inwards and do that method that I just mentioned and just close it like a normal seam. So you will have a little bit sticking out there, but compared to the other method, which kind of looks a little bit messy, this is 110% the go tried to film close up I chose one side of the fabric to be completely good sides facing shuffled around the fabric so that was just facing I kind of literally had to like put the pin in move the fabric around and make sure that it wasn't overlapping in other sections that I didn't want to be there and then as I kept going around this little circular section I would just shift the fabric and focus on that and then I did it so it overlaps a little bit onto this other side as well and then all I have to do now is just close up that little section if that is a terrible explanation, I'll try to find the video that I remember watching for the scrunchie and I'll probably show you this exact method. So yay for learning new things. I was literally hating on myself for failing at everything, but we have succeeded with this. Does that mean I can do it for the waist section as well? So what we're looking at is we want the good sides of these opposite fabrics to be facing to create a seamless look. I'm just going to grab these two seams that are meant to be matching, fold it so the whole piece kind of goes in towards it, prioritize matching these edges, I'm just going to pin it so it stays there, and then just keep pushing this material through. I'm going to match up the other seam as well, so I know to evenly spread out the lacquer until then. At the top there I've got the two good sides matching of the opposite materials and then everything is kind of tucked in this little tent tunnel section under there and I'm just gonna have to keep pulling it out as I go. This is just like making a massive scrunchie. And then I'm going to figure out the elastic and do the same process where I just measure the width of the area minus a couple of inches, cut that elastic, sew it onto the seam allowance section of the waist. Now I can flip it good sides out through the crotch that I left open and then all I need to do is just close up that section. Oh 
why is this stuff not taught in school? So as you saw, I kind of stuffed up along the way there and it was a bit of a process, but we got there in the end and that is the beauty of the trial and error process. You pick up new skills. I had no idea how to do that before and just by remembering things that I had watched online, I was able to now put it into action. So now we end up with this beautiful high-waisted pair of bikinis, which are fully double-sided. So now I can wear that with my first piece that I made when it is on that sunflower side or when it is on the pink side, I can wear it with the triangle piece that I'm now about to make. I am just gonna quickly do the top section because I feel like my brain is about to explode. So for this again, I just referenced an existing pair of bikinis to get the kind of measurements. I'm happy with the original sizing. So I just added about a half an inch to the side edges and about one and a half inches to the bottom as we need it to wrap all the way around this strap that we have down here. I cut out that that first piece with the extra seam allowances added and then I made sure for the second piece when I replicated that first one to lay it good sides facing cut out two more pieces for the lining then to figure out the dimensions for the straps all I did was measure from about mid chest up and around my neck for this top bit and added about 12 inches I think it was and that was my length for the straps and then I ended up using the width as 1.5 inches as I know by the time I fold it and use up the seam allowance that will end up being a nice smaller width that I wanted so I cut out two straps at those dimensions for the neck area and then for the waist I measured my full waist area and then just doubled that as that would be enough to have that over the hanging strap section to be able to tie up. For me though I didn't have enough length left of my material to cut one long piece but I would use that to my advantage and instead of cutting out one long strap at this amount I cut out two straps at half the amount. With that in mind I'm going to have a tie feature at the front where they meet and then obviously the tie at the back to keep it all together. I just folded them good sides facing sewed one short end one long end repeated that for each piece. Now in this step I actually didn't add any elastic in and I would probably suggest to do it I was just getting to a point where I wanted to finish it and I couldn't be bothered sewing anymore The benefit of having elastic in there it just adds obviously that extra stretch in there and I think it adds extra support as well So if I was to do it again I probably would add the elastic and you just do the same process where you measure the length of it Take about a couple of inches off that length and cut the elastic to that and then stretch it out as you go onto the seam allowance area Then you can use a paintbrush or something nice and long and thin and you can push those good sides out from that closed end then we are up to the point of inserting these straps into the top so we do a sandwiching process where we lay down the first triangle with the good sides facing up we then lay the strap with like the raw edge that we left unsewn and tuck that into the top section and then sandwich the lining on top of that pin it in place in all the key points and then we're just going to sew from one corner up to the top and then down the other side leaving the bottom edge completely open so before I flipped the good sides out of these triangles I just added some elastic into the two side edges it will help give it that bit of sturdiness and pull so it doesn't gape when you're wearing it so again I just measured the length of each side cut a piece which is about one inch shorter than that and stretched it out as I sewed to fill in that gap you'll then be able to pull the good sides out and reveal this nice clean triangle so with that all attached I then just created a small hem which is about half an inch along that bottom section sewed that in place and then the second hem I obviously made it large enough for these straps to go in. Once I had that sewn I just added a pin to the end of these straps, pushed it through that designated section, created that cute little tie in the center front and then I have my beautiful triangle top ready to go. So what is my verdict of using a pattern versus self-drafting? To be honest, if I was to do this all over again, I wouldn't change a thing. I'm so happy that I looked around and found a pattern that suited my style, bought that, and then had the physical template to then create the pieces and the steps all written out to follow because that really helped me get my head around the basics of it. And then I could take tips from that to then recreate my pieces. So if you are in the same boat as me and haven't done this before, I would highly recommend looking around for a pattern and starting with that is just really handy to have that simple linear process. And then if you feel confident from there then obviously you can start recreating pieces and adjusting the details to better suit your style. So in the end I don't think there's a real winner it just totally depends where you're at in your sewing journey and how you prefer to tackle your DIY projects. I used to always just look at a bikini and look at like the tiny bit of fabric and wonder why they cost so much and now I know why. I think a lot of the money probably goes towards the labor intensive process. So the first pair of were the ones made from the swim style patterns which had the buckle at the front and the two sides and I am so happy with how that turned out 
that again that was my first attempt so there are some imperfections as they are with all the pieces that I've made. I really enjoy the silhouette of that, the high-waisted bikini style and then the kind of bando style and then I made the one piece which as we all saw was a bit of a disaster process. In the end again so many imperfections but I am so so in love with it. I have worn it on countless occasions with my collots and with some denim shorts and just on their own and then we've got the final two piece that I made and I think those are going to be like my practical pair which is ideal for surfing or adventuring and whatnot so they'll be at the top of the list for that. If you have a favorite out of the three that I've made let me know I'd love to hear your opinions and if you did happen to like this video don't forget to like it and even subscribe to my channel if you want to see more DIY creations. Hopefully this video has helped answer any questions you have around sewing bikinis yourself. Obviously it wasn't a very like detailed tutorial as I was kind of figuring things out as we were going but hopefully seeing that process has helped give you the confidence to tackle it yourself. Well I hope wherever you are you are having a lovely day and I'll see you guys in the upcoming videos.